Lumbar spinal stenosis and sciatica. Lumbar spinal stenosis, this narrowing of the spinal canal and narrowing of the intervertebral foramen. Lumbar spinal stenosis occurs due to hypertrophy of the facet joints and the ligamentum flavum and due to disc degeneration or arthritis. All these conditions restricts the nerve root canal, causing compression of the spinal nerves and sciatica. The patient with lumbar stenosis will have back pain that is better with flexion or leaning forward over a shopping cart. The pain will be worse with extension of the back. The pain is worse with standing or walking and is relieved by rest, by sitting or by flexing the spine. Diagnosis of lumbar stenosis basically depends on the patient's history and physical examination. History is the key in making the diagnosis for lumbar stenosis. The clinical picture of lumbar stenosis may be confused with lumbar disc herniation. The patient will have leg pain, weakness, cramps, burning, and heavy sensation. In general, lumbar stenosis causes bilateral leg symptoms. The pain is nonspecific. The pain can be in one or both buttocks or in one or both legs. In this herniation, the pain is always unilateral. The unilateral pain in lumbar disc herniation is according to dermatomal pattern. Depending on the nerve that's affected by the herniated disc. So, if it is L4, L5 herniated disc, it usually affects L5 nerve root, and you can get symptoms of L5 nerve root, such as decreased sensation on the top of the foot and decreased the strength of the extensor hallucis longus. In lumbar stenosis, the pain is variable and the patient may have neurogenic claudication. What is neurogenic claudication? Neurogenic claudication is heaviness and cramps of the calves. In lumbar stenosis, the straight leg raising test is rarely positive. In lumbar disc herniation, there is always a positive straight leg raising test. With every case you suspect lumbar stenosis, you need to study the circulation of the patient to make sure it is not a vascular claudication. Neurogenic claudication and vascular claudication may coexist. In both situations of lumbar spinal stenosis and vascular claudication, walking will cause the symptoms. In vascular claudication, the pain starts in the calf and is relieved when the patient stops walking. The patient can only walk a predictable certain distance, then they have to stop. Sitting will relieve the symptoms of both neurogenic claudication and vascular claudication. Standing will cause symptoms of lumbar stenosis but will relieve symptoms of vascular claudication. Using a stationary bike will relieve symptoms of lumbar stenosis, however, will aggravate symptoms in vascular claudication. In vascular claudication, pain starts distal and goes proximal because there is not enough blood going distally and the circulation is poorest distally. The reverse occurs in spinal stenosis, where the pain starts proximally and goes distally. In vascular claudication, the patient will feel better if the patient stops and stands. Not moving the legs or not moving the muscles relieves the pain. In vascular claudication, changes in the lower extremity may be present in the form of an ulcer, hair loss, edema, or skin changes. 
lumbar stenosis symptoms and the hip disease symptoms can coexist and overlap, it creates a huge dilemma in the differential diagnosis and in knowing which is the primary site of pain. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.